hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take so we did review of almost all the updates of paranoid android for nothing phone one where we compared all the builds performance stability and discussed new changes every time with their bugs you can check the review of all updates and installation process video using the links given under the video description the aim for reviewing all these updates is to give users clear understanding of what you get in the new updates are they improving or not with the previous bug fixing so we got another new update by paranoid team on the 14th of june paranoid android topaz 4 stable version this new update has lots of new changes like it comes with the nothing os camera reverse wireless charging and many more so to do we'll review all the new changes thoroughly with the full review of nothing os camera we did the geekbench performance testing ui bench and touch sampling rate testing in comparison with the old builds and at the last i shown some bugs with my final verdict so watch the video till the end now without further ado let's get started on the new adventure phone booted to the os after clean flash if you are already using paranoid android then you will get the ot notification for new topaz 4 update You can download and flash it directly from OTA without wiping data. If you check the about phone section, here you get the info that this is the Paranoid Android Topaz 4 stable build. If you check the Android version section, this is the Android 13 build with the same material clock history. Android security patch is up May 2023, which is same like old build. Kernel version is same like old build. It's 5.4.233. Build date of ROM is 14 June 2023. So almost all the things are same like old Topaz 3. So let's start with our next timestamp of the video that is performance. We will review all the changes we get in new update after performance and stability testing. As usual, initial impression of ROM is very good. Everything is absolutely buttery smooth. RAM management is also very good in the ROM. ROM runs by default on adaptive screen refresh rate. Who gets the force FPS option under display setting of the phone? and it helps to run the device at the full 120 hertz mode every apps except the camera application so let's run the geekbench 6 test here we got the score of 1078 and 2944 for the single and multi core respectively if you check the old build results there we got the score of 925 and 2916 so definitely current build has did some underwood improvement in the codes to improve the real life performance of the device After running the test for the OpenGL graphics GPU performance, I got the score of 2072. While for Hulkan graphics, we got the score of 2468. If you check and compare old build results, there we got the score of 1806 and 2468. So OpenGL graphics performance has insanely improved as compared to old build. In single word, if I want to explain the performance of this ROM, it's a number one ranking ROM in the world of custom ROMs for the Nothing Phone one. Next we are going to perform the new test called as the screen touch sampling rate testing. First time we are going to test this for paranoid android. More the screen touch sampling rate more responsive will be the apps opening touch response new for every tabs within the applications. This is especially useful for gaming for quick response of actions taken in the game. Use the touch sampling rate testing application its link is given under the video description. Open the app and move your finger on the screen. On the left we get the input rates and on the right side we get the output rates. Here you got the maximum output rate of 250 Hz which is very good. Even the stock Oxonos didn't suppose this touch sampling rate. It has maximum 125 Hz of touch sampling rate. Overall ROM has really good real life touch responsiveness within the applications and especially for games. Next we did the UI bench jitter testing as we did for old build 2. Less the jitter value, faster will be the scrolling, swiping, and in-app user experience of the ROM. After running the test, we got more fluctuations in the score, like it rising above one millisecond suddenly. If you try to use some applications during the test, last build was also has same results. On an average, you may get the results between one to zero point eight milliseconds of jitter value, which is not a best, but still. This value didn't have real life downgrade in the scrolling, swiping and in-app user experience. Everything is smooth as hell. Now let's check out the CPU stability using the CPU throttle application. Last build has the same CPU throttling issue which are based around the nothing was 1.5.1. There we always got the scores below 80%, so let's check out if this ROM 
2 has the same CPU stability issues. I ran the test on the 23rds and 5 minutes. Until the 3 minutes all went well but after that CPU throttling were started and after stopping the test we got the score of 74%. But I repeated the test immediately to reconfirm the results and surprisingly all went well until 5 minutes and after stopping test I got the instance score of 95%. So it seems that CPU throttle issue has been fixed by paranoid team for this build. These results may vary sometimes but most probably we will guess the best score here. Now let's start with the new changes done by the paranoid team. First and most important change is finally team has added the nothing was camera and wait is over. So let's check out the camera is it fully working or not. All the ultra wide camera angle modes are working for photo mode. Portrait mode for the main camera is working. Portrait pictures has good background blur effect. But unfortunately front selfie camera is not saving pictures in the memory. Even though we captured the pictures, 50 megapixel ultra HD camera mode is working, motion photos option is available and it is also working good. For video recording video establishing is working but camcorder light on the back of the device is not blinking for video shooting. All the video shooting modes like 180p 60fps, 4k, 720p 60fps all are working good. 4K 60fps option still not available. 180p with the HDR mode is also working good. Slow motion video recording has issue. It's also not getting saved in the memory even after we shoot the video recording. There is a Glyph flashlight setting available but it's not working. Still we have the Glyph torch tile under the QS panel which can be used as a Glyph flash for video recording. Under more setting we get the time lapse video recording and it's working. Both the panorama and the macro mode for the photo shooting is working. Expert mode for the camera is also working well. It has working ultra wide angle camera video shooting. So basically nothing camera has some few flaws but it's a welcome addition for this official paranoid Android ROM because official developers never add such third party add-ons. Next very important addition is the reverse wireless charging is now working. Who gets the battery share option under the QS panel? We have to manually add it in the QS panel by using the edit icon. After enabling this style, we get the constant notification of battery share under notification panel. Let's check out if it's working or not. I checked it using my Galaxy Watch and surprisingly it's working. Device is charging. Next, developer has improved the Glyph light working and its user experience. All the features are available here like flip to Glyph, it's working good. Who gets toggles to enable the calls and notification glyph animations? We have a bunch of different glyph call animations presets, but still they didn't have any ringtones added and stock ringtones are not synchronized with these animations. Same issue is present for notification glyph. Both battery level and music visualizer toggles are working, but now who gets another new toggle called as the reverse wireless charging animation. We have to enable this toggle to make animation working. Here you can check. It's working after placing the wireless charging device on the back of the device. So overall Glyph Light function is now close to fully working condition. Maybe with the next build other functions will be fixed. Next developer has added the proximity sensor check for double tap or single tap wake up during when phone is in AOD or off screen mode. If your device proximity sensor got covered in the pocket or if you intentionally covered it then double tap or single tap wake up didn't work to avoid the accidental wake ups. This is a similar phenomenon of pocket mode used for hardware buttons accidental wake up of the device. Next developer has added the native video calling support for Airtel sims in the dialer. To use this go to the network setting they tap on the gear icon available near the carrier name. Under that enable the carrier video calling, now under the dialer who gets the video calling option to directly do the video calling while dialer is safe. Now vendor code of the device is updated to the latest nothing OS 1.5.4. These are all the new changes and new features we've seen along with the performance comparison between old and new build. If you ask about the bugs, ROM is fully bugless except the issue of wideband security as L3 which is not allowing the Netflix and Amazon Prime to stream over full HD resolution. But it's a common issue for all the custom ROMs because of unlocked bootloader. Except this nothing series I found here in the ROM, now it's fully working stable build update of the paranoid for the nothing phone one. Paranoid team has done the amazing job by adding the nothing voice camera and reverse wireless charging. Even improvements in the performance and stability is also welcome addition. 
so that's it for today guys hope you like rama work then please do like and share this video subscribe our channel press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching see you next time take care bye bye